Calculating formal charge. Okay, so as we build up to drawing Lewis structures for molecules, the last thing that we need to talk about is something called formal charge. And basically what this is, is a way to estimate the distribution of electrons in a molecule. And so it gives us a way to estimate the distribution of charge. And so we can find this formal charge on a given atom in a molecule by taking the number of valence electrons and subtracting the number of electrons assigned to the atom. And so what we're going to do right now is see how to assign those electrons. And then we'll calculate formal charge on atoms in a couple of molecules. Okay. So first thing that we want to do when we assign electrons for formal charge is to break the bonds, okay? And then we're going to divide the electrons equally. So remember, a single bond has two electrons, okay? So this is water, and we're going to break that bond and divide it equally. So the hydrogen's going to get one, and oxygen's going to get one. Oxy oxygen's going to get one of these, and hydrogen's going to get one. Oxygen keeps its lone pairs. Okay, and so this is the result. So you can see that we have six electrons around oxygen and each of the hydrogens has one. Okay, so now we're going to calculate the formal charge by looking on the periodic table or remembering whichever one and look at the number of valence electrons for each type of atom. And we're going to subtract off the number of electrons assigned and whatever is left, that's the formal charge. So for hydrogen, so again, so one electron was assigned. If we look on the periodic table, then we see that hydrogen has one valence electron minus one assigned. So the formal charge on hydrogen in water is zero. And same thing for oxygen. So we have six electrons on the periodic table for oxygen. And when we broke our bonds and divided the, the electrons equally plus we let oxygen keep its two lone pairs, then we ended up with six electrons assigned, and that gave us an overall formal charge of zero. So for water, all of the atoms in the molecule have a zero formal charge. So we actually wouldn't write those on the molecule because they're zero. Okay, so we show that we have calculated the formal charge, but since they're zero, we don't need to write them on the structure. Okay, so the second example, this one's a little bit harder. So here's a Lewis structure given to you, and it's phosphoryl chloride. And in the future, you're going to be drawing these for yourself and then calculating the formal charge. But right now, we're going to just take this structure and we're going to calculate the formal charge. Okay, so again, we're going to break each bond and we're going to divide the electrons equally. And remember, all of these lone pairs on each of these atoms, those atoms get to keep those, OK? So we're only dividing the electrons in the bond. So we end up with this, OK? So here's oxygen, one electron from the bond. Phosphorus kept one. Phosphorus kept one from each of the bonds. Chlorine, each of these chlorines kept one from each of the bonds. And when we calculate formal charge, then we remember the oxygen has six valence electrons, or we look on the periodic table if we forgot. And we're going to subtract off seven assigned. So oxygen already had three lone pairs, so that's six electrons. And then this last guy, that makes seven. So his overall formal charge is minus one. Okay, so that's a non-zero formal charge. So it's a little extra negative, a little extra electron density around oxygen, okay? Now chlorine, each of these chlorines, they have three lone pairs and one from the division in the bond. And we know that chlorine has seven valence electrons. And now we've assigned seven. And so the overall formal charge is zero. And then finally, now phosphorus is interesting also because phosphorus has five valence electrons, but it only receives four in the assignments. So its formal charge is plus one. So it has a little less electron density than would be ideal. So now the last thing that you have to do is add those formal charges to the structure. Okay, so we ended up with minus one formal charge on oxygen. So we're going to add that. 
So a lot of times you'll see a circle around it, but you don't necessarily have to do that. And then phosphorus is going to have a formal charge of plus one, so we're going to add that to the structure. And as we're going to find out, a Lewis structure is not complete without the formal charges added to the structure. And the very last thing, and that is that after you assign your formal charges, you need to check to make sure that they add up to the overall charge on the molecule. So phosphoryl chloride doesn't have an overall charge. It's a neutral molecule. And so our formal charges need to add up to zero. Okay? It doesn't mean that every atom in the structure has to be zero. It just means that they have to add up to zero. So oxygen is minus one, phosphorus is plus one. Those add to zero, so we're okay. But again, I really want to stress that it doesn't mean that every atom in the molecule has to be zero if the overall charge on a molecule is zero. It just means that the formal charges have to add to zero for a neutral molecule. If the molecule had an overall charge, like let's say it had an overall charge of minus one, then those formal charges should add to minus one. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is draw Lewis structures.